This video is going to show different ways to cut or splice video along with how to add and edit crossfade audio transitions in the free version of DaVinci Resolve 20. So the first thing that I'll do is select both the video files that I want to use and drag them from File Explorer onto the timeline and then change the project frame rate when asked if I want to do so. Next I will be showing how to cut video using the edit page and the cut page. So starting off after clicking on the cut tab below, there are multiple ways to navigate through the video to find where you want to create clips. The first option is this fast review feature that will play the video faster than normal for when you're not sure where you want to cut it and don't feel like scrolling. You can click and hold the round scroll icon with arrows and drag left or right to scroll the video in either direction. Or you can go down to click, hold and drag in the bottom timeline header to do the same. The top timeline on the cut page will show the whole project and it's a way to quickly scrub through every video to make cuts faster. Then we have the go to next edit buttons that do exactly what they say. I like to use these to move to the beginning and end of each clip in the project. You can also press the down arrow to move to the next edit and the go to previous button or the up arrow to move to the last edit for the video. Now to actually cut or splice the video after finding the frame where you want to start or end the clip, you can either click on the scissors icon to the left or hold down the control button and press the B key. And to remove the part of the video you don't want, just click on it and press either the backspace or the delete key. So my workflow when cutting video is to use the go to next edit feature until I get to the end of the video and then I find the frame to cut and delete the excess footage. Then I'll scrub through to find the frame I want to start at the beginning of the next video and do the same thing. And after I have made both cuts, I'll scrub back a little to play through the transition to see how it looks. And after I'm happy with all the cuts that I've made, I'll go down and click on the edit tab to start editing the project. So the first thing I will show from here is the full extent zoom button which will zoom out to show everything. Then to the right of that is the custom zoom control which will allow you to zoom out and into wherever you are at in the timeline. The edit page also has the go to previous and next edit buttons which again can also be used by pressing the up and down key. The detail zoom button will allow you to quickly zoom in on your timeline to a specific area based on the current position of the playhead. And the custom zoom button will zoom into whatever you have the right of it set it so if I have it all the way in and then click on the detail zoom and go back to the custom zoom it will show zoomed in all the way. Or if I'm zoomed in about halfway and click on the detail again and go back to the custom it will show the zoom in halfway to where I have it set. Next I will show how to cut the video from the edit page and one way to do that is to switch back and forth between blade edit mode and selection mode which you can also quickly do by pressing the B key for blade and the A key for selection. After pressing the B key I'll see the blade icon when I hover over the video and if I click it will cut the video wherever I'm at and then I can quickly switch back to selection mode by pressing the A key. Then I can select the part of the video that I want to edit and in this case I want to remove it so I can do that using a couple of ways. So I'll show the first way by right clicking on the clip and then go up to click on ripple delete or delete selected which is the option I use the most. And as shown in the menu the quicker way to use these would be to either hold down the shift key and press the backspace key for the ripple delete or for the regular delete just press the backspace key. So when I click on the delete selected option it will remove the selected clip without rippling everything to the right over to fill in the gap. Now I'm going to undo that delete so I can show what happens on the cut page so you better understand how that works when using it. The cut page has a ripple setting to the left that is on by default so it will ripple everything to the right over when you use either delete option. Next I will go back to the edit page so I can show you a couple other methods for editing video. There are three different icons that appear when you hover around a cut. You can either drag the video over to the right drag both videos at the same time or drag to the left which I will show first. So I will just click and hold the video with the drag left icon showing and then move the mouse over to drag the video over frame by frame while leaving the next video alone. I will undo that and go back over until I see the drag both icon and then click and hold and drag my mouse again and you can see it will move both videos over frame by frame. And then I can drag the video to the right over after I see the drag right icon and click on the empty space in the middle and press the delete key to remove the gap. The last edit option I want to show is the trim edit mode so I'll go up and click on the icon to select it and then I can go down to click and hold on the video clip to drag it left or right while keeping the same position and length. You can also just press the T key to switch over to this mode as well. And while in the trim edit mode, it will only let me do this with all the video clips so I need to go up and click on the selection mode icon or press the A key to return back to that mode. So the last thing I want to show is how to transition audio between a couple of video clips so I need to go up and click on the effects button until I see the window with all the effects I can use. Then I will go down and click on audio transitions and the option I want from there is the crossfade 0 dB so I will click on that and drag it over to my audio clips until it spans across both of them. 
and this will only work if the end of the left clip and the beginning of the right clip have been trimmed enough, otherwise it won't create the crossfade. There are three options that affect the incoming and outgoing halves of the crossfade effect. The plus 3 dB applies a boosted curve which can compensate for diminished levels in the middle. The minus 3 dB effect applies an attenuating curve which deliberately lowers the level of the crossfade, and the 0 dB applies the default linear fade. So let's listen to the crossfade I have set. I cut this by a car horn sound to hear how it works, so when I drag the clips over, you will hear it fade better. And now I will drag it even further just past the sound of the horn. You can just keep trying different edits until it sounds right, and you should get the hang of this pretty fast. Also, if you go down and click on the effect, it will show even more settings for it up in the inspector at the top right, so you should familiarize yourself with those as well. Hopefully this video has helped, and feel free to ask any questions that you still may have in the comments. Thank you for watching, and please like and subscribe for more quick and on-point videos.